Well, AI, short for artificial intelligence, is starting to look like a supercomputer nightmare, reminis reminiscent of HAL from 2001 or Skynet from the Terminator movies. I mean, in very simple terms, AI is a computing system that's able to construct its own statements. And this is some of what Google's version of AI thinks, quote-unquote, if you can call it that. This is out of the Australian today. Lydia Thorpe is a role model for Aboriginal young people and an inspiration to many Australians. Peter Dutton is controversial. And Google AI also backs a voice to Parliament. Now, to me, that sounds like the undergraduate views of a slightly annoying uni student. Here to explain this very new technology for you is Toby Walsh, Professor of AI at the University of New South Wales and the author of Machines Behaving Badly. Welcome, Professor. I mean, these programs seem dangerously woke. Are they simply reflecting the biases of the people who are programming them? And if so, is it really artificial intelligence if it's just repeating what someone else wants it to repeat to you? Well, all language is political, and Google has made a choice exactly how to train this. Um, you compare it to something like ChatGPT. They took a, I think, a ChatGPT. They took a more middle of the road, but clearly, uh, Google have taken a slightly more progressive attitude to its views. Um, but if you're going to say something about this subject, you're going to be taking a political position. And so you, we can see where Google's is. I expect it's going to end up like newspapers. We're going to choose our chatbot depending on our political preferences. So if, if it can be tamed, or let's say that you've got, you know, your choice, you want your, your right-wing AI, your left-wing AI, but uh, what is the value of this for the average Australian beyond a uni student or a student at school who wants it to write their essay for them? Oh, well, there's a thousand and one things that you can do, and there's a thousand and one things that we'll discover how, how it's going to help our lives. I compare this to the beginning of the personal computer. Um, when the personal computer came out, we had the spreadsheet. That was the first killer app. Um, and then we discovered a thousand and one other things. Um, it really can do lots of things. It can answer all your emails. It can write you a shopping list. Uh, it can come up with uh, ideas for a birthday party for your 12-year-old. Um, there's lots and lots of different things it can do, and we're only just discovering the tip of the iceberg. Well, the science fiction movie version of all of this, of course, is that the machines take over, the AI computers, you know. I mean, do they end up outsmarting us as mere mortals? And is there a concern about what this could ultimately do for humanity or is it just a you know, topic for fantasy writers? But there certainly are some things that we should be concerned about. I think actually the risks are much more mundane than they are like a Terminator scenario or a HAL computer taking over the planet. I think the risks are, that, that for example, misinformation. These are the perfect tools to create misinformation, um, to create conspiracy theories and untruths. Um, and to just swamp us with a, a sea of synthetic content so that we can't mm. actually see the truth from this um, artificial. Indeed, and, and I've played around with ChatGPT and a bit of this Google one today, and, and I've found they'll basically tell you what they think you want to hear. It will lie to you if that is what it thinks you want to hear, um, which is all good and well if that's what you want. <laughs> if you're one of these kids who's putting it through to try and get your uh, UDSA done, you might be in a bit of trouble. Thanks for your time tonight, Professor Walsh.